is how we ride. This is how Back we to do. the high limit, though, because this is the stuff that's just unbelievable. Just unbelievable. You signed Justin Peck today. Um, at least that was the release that was put out to the uh, to the country. And, and to me, the, I, I've been saying the last couple of uh, couple of days, you know, or, or think about a week now, if they could get Justin Peck, I think a, a Justin Peck is the dirt tracks, Mister Excitement, you know, and 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 can be high limits, shield and hot and shout. If I'm Flo, I'm marketing this guy very similar to how they market Hot and Child over there on the World of Outlaws. the The driving style is just as extreme. He pulls off a bunch of close moves on the racetrack. Most of the time makes them clear. Uh, he 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 has had some wrecking issues. Obviously, we saw the big Bridgeport wreck last year where his cage came apart. Luckily, he's still here racing with us. But this is a guy who is, in my opinion, hard level as far as excitement on the track. And in my opinion, at, at this point, I would say, you know, it's hard to say he's better than Sheldon because he hasn't gotten out there much. But let's re- let's remind everyone that Justin Peck, in his family-owned car, I think it was 2018 at, at Tri-State in Hobstadt, almost beat the World of Outlaws, got into it actually, racing for the lead with Sheldon Hoddenshaw, believe it or not. Uh, of course, that was the NASCAR at the time. And then all of a sudden, random drug tests come out there, and, and they got him for, for marijuana at the time, which is just insane considering everything else that you can hear and experience about in the world uh, and uh, of the pitting areas in particular, um, considering Adderall and all these other things that are out there that are legal, um, and, and we're talking about a drug that technically federally should be decriminalized. We're talking about a drug that doesn't harm your body and actually stays in your system for long periods of time because it's not recognized as a poison within your system. That's that's why marijuana and 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 we can stay in a person's system because it absorbs into the fat cells cells because marijuana and weed was used as food for the history of mankind until DuPont came in and wanted to make plastic based materials. By the way, the Declaration of Independence, the actual paper is made of hemp. The cells that that were on the ships that came to America were made on hemp, which which was weed. If you didn't, if you didn't harvest crops, harvest weed crops, I think it was like in the 1800s in Kentucky, you went to prison, guys. So this is just ridiculous in itself. I think marijuana should be okay, USC style rules. I mean, the rest of the world has moved up in society. They're not still in the backwoods beating their wife and drinking, saying, screw you potheads. You know, we're all we're all modernized out here in the regular world. I don't know why we consumption or use is even a deal. But regardless, and I defended him on that point when that happened. Apparently, he's all cleaned up. I don't even think I don't even think if you're not using weed or if you are using weed, I still consider you clean. You're definitely cleaner than if you're knocking down 24 packs every night. Uh, But regardless um, this is a guy who, who came back from that. And this this is why I use that example. Almost beat the outlaws in his home state. Got crucified in this disgusting racing world that looks down upon a plant apparently. And then made his way back and is clawed back to where he is today. And that is a story worth documenting as well. Is this Justin Peck? story of getting to where he's at today and then once again in my opinion I think he's a Sheldon type excitement driver he's going to add that flair that craziness to every race night you never know what he's going to do and in my opinion he is just a little more consistent than Sheldon in in my I think Sheldon has some upsides every now and then that are, are amazing but I think that Justin Peck has that out of controlness with that upside as well and and if you put him I was saying it the other day you put him on a national tour with the right equipment and team, he's going to do some amazing things. And now, Boot Motorsports is able to do that. And I'm hearing, or at least it is a fact, that teams are going to be benefiting a lot more contractually uh, with the High Limit Sprint Car Series in a charter-style system. There is revenue sharing with the team. So a team like a, a Boot Motorsports 
potentially is able to go on the road because they're seeing an actual number of a, per- a percentage that they're going to be earning by being a part of this series. Now, this is traditionally a NASCAR deal. Well, actually, F1, FIA does. Uh, this is the this is regular business, motorsports business tactics to have charter systems so that teams can survive and prosper and also pick drivers that they want. Now, NASCAR is a little out of whack with their charter system, and that's why they're taking big sponsorship and, and, and basically bribery to put drivers in cars instead of actually talented drivers. So hopefully uh, Dirt Racing gets to learn from their mistakes they've made in the last 10 or 15, 20 years and not make the same ones. Um, but the charter system is definitely interesting. And then you can sell your spot eventually once you get that spot to a worth worthy position. Now, the charter system does not exist technically in the world racing group, but it kind of does. So what I'm hearing, and once again, just hearing, is that teams within the high limit series, the charter system, there is at the end of the year going to be 50% of the revenue uh, that the series kind of obtained through streaming, etc. And that will be dispersed through the teams that are contractually obligated with the high limit sprint car series at the end of the year. Well, and that's pretty much what a charter system is. The overall organizations make a certain amount and it's dispersed to the teams. It's the proper way of, of working government and not just a hoarding based one like the other examples that we get. Now, in the same light, you could say that the World of Outlaws World Racing Group technically has the same style thing. They just put it in bonus programs and stuff. They got these bonuses at the end of the year, the toe bo- this bonus appearance, this bonus, that bonus. And that, in a way, that could be worth more than revenue sharing contractually directly with the teams. So it's just... How Flo's doing it is a little more transparent, I believe. And I think transparency almost carries value in itself more than monetariness, especially in today's society. There is somewhat of an anti all about the money uh, uh, stream coming up right now, just a little bit. Obviously, they're making moves that are all about money. But as far as dealing with people in business, people sometimes like to make the moral righteous choice. They like the transparency. They don't want to feel like they're getting taken advantage of. And when numbers and things are presented and people are able to see what they're able to do and what they may be worth, I think they like that a little bit more than like, we're not going to tell you, here's some bonus at the end of the year. So in a way it is a chart. Well, it is a charter system. There is value in being a team owner in the high limit series, legitimately like on paper. Uh, and, But, oh, and but, that's a lot of different words, but you could say that it's more financially viable to be an outlaw tour driver because of the bonuses and the championship funds and this, that, and the other. It's all going to be interesting to see how it works out. Now, this is how we ride, this is how we do.